Thank you, Fred, and welcome to the Global Energy Forum at the Atlantic Council, virtually this year. I'm honored to have the opportunity to be in conversation with one of the most intriguing figures in the UAE and the global energy markets beyond. His Excellency Dr. Sultan Al Jaber holds many titles. Recently, Dr. Sultan was also named to be the UAE Special Envoy on Climate Change, a relevant topic for what we're gonna be discussing today. Welcome, Your Excellency. It is great to see you, uh, even if just virtually. In fact, I believe the last time we saw each other was at this Global Energy Forum in Abu Dhabi last year. As I just said, you've recently been named Special Envoy on Climate Change and the UAE just announced its second NDC. What is the UAE's approach to contributing to the global effort to overcome the challenge of climate change? Hello, Amos. Uh, I'm very happy to, uh, to see you and to speak to you. And let me just say hello uh, to everyone participating at the Atlantic Council uh, Global Energy Forum. Uh, and uh, I'm very happy to be back and to be joining you all, even though virtually, uh, hoping that next year we'll all be able to meet uh, in person uh, and hopefully here uh, in Abu Dhabi. Uh, allow me also to say uh, uh, welcome uh, to everybody participating in this year's forum from around the world and in particular our friends uh, in the United States. Now, uh, back to your question, uh, those who know the UAE uh, and that those who know the UAE well know that we have always made a, a positive contribution uh, to helping address global challenges. And the challenge of climate change uh, is no different. This is exactly uh, the narrative or the ethos that guided us uh, to launch Masdar about 15 years ago as a clean uh, technology hub uh, that today uh, is the permanent home of the International Renewable Energy Agency, IRENA. Uh, and Masdar today has also become uh, a true global investor uh, in renewable energy globally. In more than 30 countries, Masdar is already uh, physically present through large investments by scaling up uh, renewable energy technologies and investing uh, in scaling up those technologies and helping bring the cost down. Uh, we not only talk the talk, we walk the walk. And we have seen firsthand how smart uh, investment and in diversifying the energy mix can pay off. When we started Masdar uh, 15 years ago, solar and wind were high cost, nascent energy sources, but today they are very cost competitive. In fact, we just set a new record for low-cost solar energy uh, at the world's largest solar park here uh, in Abu Dhabi and at the Al-Dhafra region with a tariff of 1.35 cents per kilowatt hour. We were the first country in the region to sign the Paris Accords uh, and the NDC that, that we submitted last month. Uh, this makes us the first country in the region to commit to an economy-wide uh, emission reduction. Our approach to climate change reflects our leadership's dedication to addressing global challenges. Uh, and we do this in close partnership with international community and with uh, all kinds of uh, partners from all over the world. And we believe that partnership, not just between countries, but between industries, including the oil and gas industry is actually crucial to achieving our collective climate goal, uh, climate, uh, climate objectives and climate change goals. Dr. Sultan, let me pick up on something that you just talked about. You've been at the forefront, as you said, of promoting renewable energy, not just UAE, but you personally have been at that forefront through your leadership of Mazdar. And uh, you and I met when you were, uh, in your the early years of you chairing Mazdar. And in fact, I remember in the spring of 2016, uh, I toured Mazdar together with then Vice President Biden, tomorrow about to become President Biden. And we received a tour from you. And later that evening, 
in a small dinner with His Highness Sheikh Mohammed, we talked about what you just talked about right now. You, Sheikh Mohammed, asked you to brief the Vice President on the role of UAE and the ability to see the, the importance of climate change and the role that UAE was already then playing uh, through Mazdar and advanced technologies. And over the last four years, in addition to chairing Mazdar, you've also been the CEO of Adnoc. And I was wondering if you can share with us how you see those roles aligning. You just touched on that in your last answer about the, the role of the oil and gas industry. How do you see those roles aligning, especially now as you come to the global stage as the UAE uh, climate change special envoy? Amos, I remember that visit uh, by the incoming President uh, Biden so well. Uh, it actually feels like if it happens on, it happened only a few days ago. Uh, I, and I remember in particular how important sustainable development and sustainability in general uh, was uh, to the incoming president. Uh, I remember how engaging uh, he was, and I remember also the type of questions uh, he, was, uh, he was asking. Uh, it is clear how much focus he intends to give to climate change uh, as part of his agenda. Uh, and uh, yes, I was very honored uh, to have had the opportunity to share with him how uh, we approach these issues uh, here in the UAE. And I was also very pleased uh, to have the opportunity to give him uh, firsthand uh, practical examples of what we are doing through Mazdar uh, and the many other initiatives here uh, in the Emirates. Now, getting back to your uh, question, uh, you asked me about how these roles, uh, in a way, fit together. Uh, and I'm glad, Amos, that you asked me this question because I know that it crosses many people's minds. Uh, it is firstly uh, a great honor that I have been appointed by my leadership to take on the climate envoy role for the second time uh, after previously serving in this capacity between 2010 and uh, 2015. Since then, uh, as you rightly point out, I have assumed the role of the group uh, chief executive at uh, the Abu Dhabi National Oil Company. And rather than being in conflict, I believe working across the energy mix has given me a deeper uh, understanding of the entire uh, energy system. And based on this, it is clear that the hydrocarbon industry simply has to be at the center of the conversation on climate change. And most importantly, oil and gas has to play a role to be part of the solution. And the fact is, the world will still rely on oil and gas for many decades to come. So this industry, uh, the oil and gas industry, can and must play an important role in the transition to a lower carbon future. Here, the UAE has a dual advantage. A leadership that has always put environmental stewardship and environmental protect protection first, and a natural advantage because our geology gives us some of the least carbon intensive oil in the world. And we are building on this position by reducing our carbon intensity by a further 25% over the next 10 years. And we're doing this by enhancing efficiencies and expanding our industrial scale carbon capture and storage facility, which is known to be the first and the largest in our region. In addition, we are exploring the potential of new fuels such as hydrogen, which could be a game changer uh, in the energy transition. We already here in Adnok uh, produce about 300,000 tons of hydrogen a year as part of our current uh, industrial processes. We are currently exploring the viability of markets in Asia and in Europe uh, as those markets progress and develop. Uh, we will build uh, the business case that could position uh, us, Abu Dhabi and the UAE as a major 
بلاير ان ميجر سبلاير اوف بلو هيدروجين وورلد وايد ات از فيري ايرلي دايز ذو بات وذ ذا رايت ريجيلاتيف فريم ورك اي بيليف ذير از سيجنيفيكانت بوتنشال ان هيدروجين انرجي Dr. Sultan, you've just talked about some of the efforts by by the UAE and the in the advanced technology around the renewable energy. And I was wondering, as we come into a, a new administration uh, here in the United States with President Biden and uh, Vice President-elect uh, Harris, and this the focus that you just talked about that you saw from from President-elect Biden when he was in Mazdar has just uh, increased over the, the years since that visit. Um, so with this focus, and, and you'll be working with uh, John Kerry, the uh, uh, former Secretary of State, John Kerry now as the, as the envoy, um, how do you see the opportunities for collaboration uh, specifically between the UAE and the United States Uh, on all these areas that you just discussed that you're doing from the UAE, what are the areas of cooperation and collaboration uh, that you see possible in the near future? As you know, Amos, the UAE uh, and the U.S. have a deep-rooted, very strong, long-standing relationship uh, based on shared values and strategic interests. The relationship between the UAE and the U.S. is multifaceted, covering uh, diplomacy, uh, politics, security, energy, trade, technology, investments, uh, investments in different uh, areas, private equity, uh, partnerships and investments, of course, culture and healthcare. Uh, in short, we are very aligned uh, in many, many areas, such as uh, promoting peace, creating opportunity, and enabling progressive prosperity. The Abraham Accord is a very good example. In fact, it's a prime example. With U.S. diplomatic support, we created a bridge for the first time between Israel and the Gulf countries. And this agreement in particular is already creating economic opportunity for the whole region. Our strategic energy alliance with the U.S. is already very strong, and as you know, The U.S. was instrumental in bringing peaceful nuclear energy to the UAE as part of the 123 agreement. And as both our countries emerge from the pandemic, I believe there are great opportunities for collaboration across the energy sector and I'm sure across a variety of many other sectors. Starting though with energy, starting though with energy, Amos, uh, You know we have many concessions and exploration partnerships with many U.S. companies, including Exxon, uh, Oxy, uh, Baker Hughes, uh, just to name a few. Uh, in the near term, uh, there is room for deepening uh, this energy cooperation around unconventional oil and gas, which we are currently progressing and discovering here in, uh, in Abu Dhabi, and it's very, very promising and would provide a very special, unique opportunity for American companies to explore such uh, partnership opportunities with us. And there are, of course, very clear opportunities to build on our cooperation and efficiency enhancing technologies, uh, new energies uh, such as hydrogen, uh, carbon capture and storage, and of course, renewable energy sits very high on our agenda, and I am sure There will be many areas uh, of cooperation in the field of renewable energy and the mitigation of climate change. Outside of energy, uh, and as our economy diversifies, I see significant potential uh, for investment in our emerge, emerging industrial sectors, uh, manufacturing, biotech, healthcare, agriculture. Uh, we've seen recently many U.S. private equity firms Uh, discover the UAE as a stable, well-governed, well-established, business-friendly investment destination. And we welcome that. And we look for more opportunities uh, like those. Uh, in addition, uh, we would like to see more collaboration uh, on artificial intelligence, uh, advanced technologies. We would like to see us expand our cooperation uh, between 
the MBZ UAI University, the Mohammed bin Zayed University for Artificial Intelligence. It is the first of its kind, homegrown, graduate level, research driven, very much focused on uh, artificial intelligence, uh, uh, digitization and machine learning. That could be a very unique opportunity for true long term strategic partnership in a very important field like AI. In short, there is no shortage of great opportunities, uh, great opportunities uh, for investors from the U.S. to explore here. Uh, and I know that these investment opportunities will offer great returns, while also making sure that they are uh, they provide practical progress on helping address global challenges. Thank you, and and I think that that also demonstrates your ability to lead on many of these areas as both in the energy field, on both the oil and gas, the climate, as well as in the in the Ministry of, uh, of Industry and Techno Advanced Technology. But let me turn to another area of potentially of cooperation that will be needed, uh, not just with the US, but on a, on a global stage. If you think about the COP negotiations, the COP26 negotiations upcoming in Glasgow, which are the most consequential since Paris. This summit comes as the world is not only united as never before on climate change and the ability, to, the need to come together uh, to address this crisis, but also the world is coming out, hopefully coming out or potentially seeing the light at the end of the tunnel of coming out of uh, the global pandemic and COVID-19. In that pandemic, as we recover from it, we also see the, the haves and the have nots, the, the separation between countries as economically as we come through this deepen. How should the industrial world balance those needs of economic development uh, and the basic needs to be able to supply their own people with uh, necessary needs uh, in the emerging economies with the need for a global and universal climate change action. The COVID experience has shown us that when humanity comes together, there is no challenge we can't overcome. And while COVID and climate change are two very different challenges, they have three factors in common. They are both global, they respect no borders, and they require a collective united response. And just as we have with COVID, the UAE will lead as a responsible global citizen, and it will use its convening power to help advance global progress when it comes to addressing climate change. A great example, aside from uh, Abu Dhabi Sustainability Week itself, is the upcoming Dubai Expo, which will be the first expo hosted in our region. It will be focused on uniting the world around equitable solutions to sustainable development. In fact, the Sustainability Pavilion uh, was only opened yesterday. And hopefully when you come uh, soon uh, to the UAE, uh, you'll be able to visit the expo site. Uh, and I know for a fact it's something you should uh, see and experience. And to get back to your specific question about balancing the needs uh, of emerging economies with climate action, I find this to be a, a very important question. In fact, it is a critical question. I fundamentally believe that we can achieve climate goals while ensuring economic progress if we avoid one-size-fits-all policies. We need to adopt a custom-tailored approach for each region, and we need to always strike a balance. Reducing carbon is something we can all agree is a common goal, but it should not undermine the ability of emerging economies to give their people a better future and to ensure a progressive, uh, stable economic growth. For instance, Africa should not be forced to pay the price for the industrial revolution that helped mature economies to get to the level of development they enjoy today. We need to create the right mechanism in terms of funding, energy mix, and broader uh, economic development that strikes that right balance. So 
I am very much looking forward to COP26. Uh, uh, I know for a fact the UAE uh, will play an important role. I know for a fact that the UAE again will play a proactive and a productive and a pro pro progressive role in helping achieve uh, the global objectives uh, in addressing uh, such a global challenge in addressing climate change. Thank you, Dr. Sultan. I think that um, from cooperation between our two countries and uh, cooperation of our two countries with the rest of the world, uh, I hope we can achieve some of the goals that uh, that are so so needed right now to address not only climate change, but to do it as you just talked about in a way that enables the whole world uh, to battle climate change in the best way that they can. Uh, we've come to the end of our time. Uh, I could have continued all day and I think everybody listening to you could continue all day to listen to how to thread this needle that you are uh, that you are tasked with. Um, but I know that we have a great uh, agenda coming forward in the in the forum. Uh, I thank you for taking the time to be with us today and for the opportunity to be in conversation with you today. Thank you very much, Amos. And I want to thank everyone at the Atlantic Council for uh, such an instrumental uh, uh, work. And, uh, and I thank them for the opportunity. And I look forward to seeing you all in person in the very near future. Please stay safe. Thank you.